Hi YouTube, this is Mike Shackelford, also known as the Wizard of Odds, and in today's video I'm going to be endeavoring to explain to you what these Baccarat scoreboards actually mean. They're very cryptic, it took me years to understand what they meant myself, but this is an example, and you can see this from the one on my website at the Wizard of Odds, and this is meant to look just like what you might see in the casinos. There are different parts to it. This part here is called the, be uh, the bead plate. This is called the big road. This is called the big eye boy. This is called the small road. And this is called the cockroach pig. And these two parts are pretty simple. And then they get more complicated down here at the bottom. So um, let's just start a fresh shoe here. Let's start with the bead plate, which is this table right up here. This is really easy. It's just going to fill up with red, blue, and green beads according to the hands dealt in the shoe. It will start in the upper left, work its way down. When it reaches the bottom, it starts a new column, goes down, and like this, just across the bead plate. And it also indicates if there was a banker player pair with a little red dot in the upper left corner of that grid and a player pair with a little blue dot in the lower right side. And if the win was a natural win, then the upper right portion of that grid will be grayed out. So let's play some hands so you can get an example. So click history again to get back to the game board. And let's just play a few hands. So here we have a player win. Let's do another one. And here we have a banker win. So let's have a look. Player, banker. And let's keep going. And here we have a natural player win. So let's see what that looks like. Here we have another blue bead for a player win. And I don't know if this is going to show up well on the video after it goes through multiple layers of editing. But the upper right portion of this grid is grayed out. So let's deal a few more. Here we have another natural player win. And here we have a banker win. So let's have a look again. Here we have another natural player win as indicated by the blue bead with the upper right side being grayed out. And here's a red bead for the banker win. So let's keep going. Another player natural win. Here we have a, a banker natural win. Player and here we have a tie. So let's see what a tie looks like. So here's our green bead for the tie. So you can see up here that the shoe so far has gone player, banker, player, player, banker, player, banker, tie. And we have already had four natural, five natural wins as you can see by these um, five grayed out triangles and let's uh, let's play until we see either a banker pair or a player pair. Okay, so here we have a player pair, and it only counts in the first two cards of the given hand. So let's see what it looks like on the bead plate. And here we go. You can see the red bead indicating a banker win, but you see this little blue dot in the lower right corner. 
that indicates that there was a player pair. And my game doesn't let you bet on the pairs, but sometimes in land casinos, there are two side bets, one on a player pair and one on a banker pair. So some players find that important. So there you go. That's about all there is to say on the bead plate. Hope you understood that. And let's move on to the big road. So this section right here is called the big road. And it's rather similar to the bead plate, except for things are arranged differently. Like the bead plate, it starts in the upper left corner. And like the bead plate, a red circle means a banker win and a blue circle means a player win. The big difference is in how the circles are arranged. So starting with the first hand here, you can see we had three banker wins in a row. And we can also see that reflected in the bead plate by three red circles starting from the top and going down. And then we see in the fourth hand a player win. And when there is a flip between a banker and a player win, it starts a whole new row. So that is why the next circle is here in the second row and it goes back up to the top. And there are going to be, and it's just going to keep going down until it flips again back to a banker win, which you see that it did the very next hand. After that fourth hand that was a player win, we now have four consecutive banker wins. So with that first one, there was another flip. So we go to a new row and then we just keep going down as long as their banker wins. Now, what happens if there's a tie on the big road, you might ask? Then you just draw a green slash through the last event. Maybe another way to look at it is that ties are not very significant in terms of the big road. They are just ignored except for this green slash. What if there were two uh, ties in a row? I think that there's two green slashes, I'm not sure. And let's, let's play a few more hands just to see how the big road develops a little bit more. So let's click deal. And here we have a player win. So let's go back to the history. So you can see here that there was another flip. Again, ignoring the tie, there is a flip from a banker win to a player win. So that starts a whole new row here. So let's deal another hand. Here we have a tie. So going back here, we draw a green slash through that last event. And let's do another hand. And we have a banker win. So let's go back here. And the banker win constitutes another flip. Again, we ignore that tie. So because there was another flip, we start a whole new row right here. So this is the fifth row, which indicates that there have been four flips so far. So let's do another hand. And here we have another tie. And let's just deal another one. And here we have another banker win. So let's go back to the history. And we draw another green slash for that tie. And we can see that ignoring that tie, there have been two banker wins in a row since the last flip, thus two red circles here. And let's just deal another one. And here we have a player win. So let's go back here. and that player win constituted another flip, so we start a whole new row. Now, what happens if we get more than six consecutive wins of the same winner, player or banker? And that will form what's known as a dragon tail. So let me play by myself a little bit with the camera off and try to form a dragon tail. Okay, I played through three shoes for you guys, but I finally got to a dragon tail. Previously, I got to six in a row lots of times, but then there was a flip on the seventh hand. So, looking at the bead plate, we see two bankers in a row, 
And then so far we have had seven player wins in a row, not counting that tie. So we can see on the big road, here are the two bankers, and then here are the seven players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And why did it bend over to the right, you might ask? Well, clearly this table here is only six deep, so when it hits the bottom or it hits another dragon tail, it will bend over to the right, and it will just keep going to the right as long as we continue to have more player wins. So let's make another bet and see if the dragon tail keeps going. And there we do. Uh, we have another player win. So let's see what our dragon tail looks like. And you can see it went one more blue circle to the right. So let's see how far we can keep it going. And here we have a tie. So again, for purposes of the big road, ties don't really matter. They just get this green slash through the last significant event. So let's keep it going. And our dragon tail comes to an end with that banker win. So let's have a look. Here you can see that banker win ending that streak of eight player wins, so that forms a new row here in the big road. So what is so significant about Dragon Tales, you might ask, I keep bringing it up. Well, as I hope you know, Baccarat is like a biased coin flip game. The odds are practically the same every single hand. It does not help looking for patterns but Baccarat players are not the type to believe me on that, and they're a very superstitious bunch, and they love to see big, long streaks of things. And I think a lot of them like to troll around the casino looking at these scoreboards, hoping to find a dragon tail. And if they find a dragon tail and it's still going, they're probably gonna throw their money on the table back betting to ride that dragon tail. I really wanna emphasize it's a waste of time, but that is just the way Baccarat tends to be played. Okay, let's move on to the big eye boy, shall we? Now this one gets even more difficult to explain, so pay attention. In general, the big eye boy is a measurement of how predictable or chaotic the shoe has been. And I will explain how it measures that in just a minute. This is a fresh shoe here. So let's make some bets just to try to get a trend or a lack of a trend going. So that was a banker win. What we need to do is to wait for at least one side flip and then one hand after that flip. So that was a banker win again. So let's go again. And there's another banker win. So let's go again. And here we have a player win. So now we have flipped sides. Now we just need one more hand to get our first entry into the big eye boy. And we have a tie. For purposes of the big eye boy, ties are ignored, so let's go again. And here we have a banker win. So let's look at our history. So here we ha see that the shoe has gone banker, banker, player, banker. And this is not predictable. We started out with a run of two bankers. Something predictable would have been at least two players in a row. But because what happened is another banker, that's a sign of chaos. And here in the big eye boy, a blue circle is a sign of chaos and a red circle is a sign of predictability. And how specifically did the game interpret this as being chaotic? Here is how. If the last entry in the big road started a new row, I mean a new column, then what you do is you look at the previous two columns and if they are the same height, or shall I say the same depth, 
That is a sign of predictability and you would get a red circle in the big eye boy if they are not the same depth as is the case here then that is a sign of chaos and you get a blue circle so let's deal another hand <clears throat> okay here we have a banker win so let's have a look now we have had two bankers in a row the last two hands and when the last entry is not at the top of a column what you do is you go to the left one square from the from the very latest entry in the big road and then go up if they are different then that is another sign of chaos but if they are the same that is a sign of predictability and you would get a red circle so this is a blue circle because we go to the left and we get a blank and then we go up and we get a circle because they are not the same that is chaos and we get a blue circle so let's go again so now we have a player win let's go back to our history and that is a flip between a run of bankers and a run of players so we get a new row right here in the big road and as I just said if you're starting a new row then what you do is you go to the previous two rows to the left this one and this one if they are the same depth then you get a red circle and if not you get a blue circle thus the blue circle here and you may be seeing how these blue circles are going down that and it works just the same way in that respect as the big road as long as these entries stay the same color then they keep going down even forming dragon tails and if not then they form a new column so let's go again here we have a player win so let's go back and here is our latest entry in the big road you can see that now we have a column too deep here and too deep here that is predictable and why is it predictable it's because when you're not at the top of a column you go to the latest entry right here then you go one to the left and then one up if they're the same that is predictable and you get a red circle so here is our red circle and it starts a new column because there is a flip in color so let's go again here is a player win so let's go back and here is our latest entry so as I just said if you're not at the top of a column you go to the left and then up if they are different that is chaotic and you get a blue circle in the big eye boy so here is our latest entry the blue circle right here and why is it in a new column because the previous entry was red and there was a flip in color in the big eye boy so let's go again okay now we have a player win so let's go back here is our latest entry so again we go to the left and one up now this is predictable because we have a blank and a blank a blank is equal to a blank so that is predictable thus we get a red predictable entry in the big eye boy which is right here so let's go again now we have a player win so let's go again here's our latest entry so again from the latest entry in the big road we go to the left and then up are both of these the same yes they're both blanks therefore we get another red predictable circle in the big eye boy now you might be asking what is so predictable about this and to be honest I wasn't the one who made these rules but I think it could be said that now we're getting a nice run of players going and there I guess it sets a new precedent unto itself but it's a, this consistency in five players in a row is, shall we say, a sign of predictability. Therefore, we're getting red circles 
in the big eye boy. So let's go again. And now we have a player win. So let's go back and here's our latest entry. Again, we go to the left and then one up. They're both blanks. Thus, we get another red circle in the big eye boy. And notice that we're getting a, a dragon here. Uh, we're one hand away from having a dragon tail. So let's hope we get another player win just because we like to see dragon tails. And yes, we have another player win. So let's go back. So here's another example of a dragon tail in the big road. And what do you do with the big eye boy with a dragon tail? Well, you just have to basically ignore the dragon tail. And if this went deeper than six columns, I mean six rows, then this blue circle would be over here. And again, you would go one to the left and one up. They would both be blank. Therefore, we get a red circle in the big eye boy. So let's go again. And yes, we get another player win. So exactly the same thing. We have another blue circle in our dragon tail and another red circle here because this trend of player wins has is um, continues to go. So let's just keep going until that player run ends, which it just did with that banker win. So let's go back to our history. Here is our banker win. So again, when you are at the top row, then you look at the two columns to the left of it. Here we have a column that is eight deep, and here we have a column that is two deep. So because two does not equal eight, we get a blue chaotic entry in the big eye boy. So that is, um, I hope you understand that. If you didn't, feel free to play it again. What I think I'll do is I will play some more hands with the camera off just so, and then come back just so you can see a longer trend too, so you can prove it to yourself how it works. So I dealt deeper into the shoe here the last one I commented on, I think, was this hand here. So I will just quickly comment on some more. So with this hand here, that is predictable because these two are the same. Then we have a flip to a player. This is unpredictable because this column of two does not equal this column of eight. So this is chaotic. This one is predictable because this, because these two are both circles here. This is chaos because the blank does not equal the circle. Then we go back to a banker win. So are these two columns here the same? No, this one is three and this is two. Therefore, this is chaos. This is chaos because this column of two does not equal this column of one. Then we go back to a player win. And this is predictable because the previous two columns are both the same depth. Here is chaos because we have a blank and a circle. This is predictable because we have two blanks. And now I'll just say what they are without explaining. So chaos, predictable, 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 chaos, chaos, predictable, predictable, chaos, 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 predictable, 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 chaos, 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 predictable, 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 pre uh, chaos, predictable, 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 chaos, chaos, predictable, chaos, chaos, predictable, chaos, chaos, predictable, and chaos. So, and here is what the big eye boy looks like. I, um, and it looks like a chaotic mixture of chaos and being predictable. So that is about, is about all I can think to say about the big eye boy. I hope you understood it. And let's move on to the small road here. Okay, 
Let's move on to the small road, this section right here. And in general terms, what the small road represents is whether there is, shall we say, some latent consistency in the shoe. In other words, you have to go in the past a little bit and compare the present to what happened, shall we say, a little while ago. And rather than dealing out hands again, I'm going to just look at the shoe that we just had and try to explain it from that. Now, with the small road, to even get started, you have to wait until one hand after the first hand in the third column. In other words, we had to wait for either this hand here or if this had been a player, then this hand here. So this is the first hand we can do anything with. And when you are not in the top row, what you do is you go to the left two columns and then up one. So you go to the left two, and then you compare this cell with the one directly above it. They're both the same, therefore we get a red predictable circle in the small road. And like all the other tables, you start in the upper left. So we left off here, then there is a player flip, and we get this hand here. So when you are at the top row, what you do is you compare the depth of the column to the left to three columns to the left. So right here, we're comparing the depth of this column, which is two in depth, to this column here, which is two in depth. Two equals two, therefore we have another sign of predictability in the small road Thus, we get another red circle right here. And the next hand after that is this player win right here. And again, if, you, if we are not at the top row, then we go two columns to the left and compare that cell to the one directly above it. We have a blank and a circle. Those are different. That is chaotic, therefore, we get this blue circle here. Now, let's see, where were we? We were right here, right? Now we go on to here, this player win right here. Um, and again, we go two cells to the left and compare this cell to the one above it. We have two blanks, that is predictable, thus we get a red dot right here. And then we get a bunch more red dots because of this long run of player wins here. And with them, we're comparing that to two columns to the left. And we see a nice consistent C, a nice consistent string of blanks. Therefore, we get this consistent string of reds. So this one here would be a red, a red, 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 red. And now we start a, another column because there's a flip to banker and again when we are at the top row then we go two columns no we compare one column to the left to three columns to the left and if they're the same in depth we get a red circle if not we get a blue circle they are different because eight does not equal one therefore we get this blue circle here now the next hand is another banker win. So we go two to the left and compare this cell to the one directly above it. Those are both circles. Therefore, we get another red circle here. Now, the next one is a player flip. So now we're here. So again, we compare one column to the left to three columns to the left. They are both two in depth. Therefore, we get another red circle. Then we get another player win. So we go two columns to the left and compare this cell to the one directly above it. They're both circles. Therefore, we get another red circle. Here, we again go two columns to the left and up one. These are both circles. Therefore, we get another red circle. Now we have a flip to the banker. So we're here. So we compare the depth of this column to the left to this column three to the left. 
three does not equal eight, therefore we get a blue circle here. So I hope you understood that. Um, I'm not gonna go the full way just to keep the video from lasting too long. And I believe that we are ready to go on to the cockroach pig. Okay, we are finally ready to get to the last table here, the cockroach pig. As in all the other ones, we start in the top left. To keep this video from going the length of Gone with the Wind, I'm not going to deal any fresh hands, but look at the same shoe we have been looking at. And thank you for making it this far, by the way. I'm sure there's not very many of you. Now, for the cockroach pig, what we have to wait for is the first hand in the fourth column and then the hand after that. So here's the first hand in the fourth column. We wait for one more hand after that, which is this one right here. So when we are not at the top row, what we do is we go three columns to the left, one, two, three, and then compare this cell here with the one directly above it. They're both circles, therefore we get a red right here. Why is it a slash? I have no idea. It just is the cockroach pig has slashes. So let's go to the next hand. That would have been this one here. So again, we go three columns to the left and then up one. A blank is not the same as a circle. That's a chaotic blue slash right here. Then we go to this one right here and we go three columns to the left. A blank is equal to a blank. That is a predictable red slash right here. And then we continue going down this dragon tail of player wins. So we had a red slash here, another one here, red slash, red slash, red slash. And again, much like the small road, if we hit a dragon tail for purposes of the small road and the cockroach pig, you just pretend that this goes down infinitely and you just keep going to the left. So finally, there is a flip to a banker win here. And when you are at the top row, what you do is you go one column to the left and four columns to the left. One, two, three, four. Are they the same depth? No, they are not. Here we had a depth of eight. Here we had a depth of two. Therefore, we get a blue chaotic slash right here. Then after that, we have another banker win. So again, you go three columns to the left and up one. This blank is not the same as this circle. Therefore, we get another chaotic blue slash here. Then what happened? We have a player win right here. So again, we go one column to the left and compare the depth of that to four columns of the left. One, two, three, four. Because this column depth of two is not the same as this of zero, we get another blue chaotic slash. Then the hand after that was this blue right here. And here, what we do is we compare one column to the left to three columns to the left. One, two, three, and they are not the same depth. We have a depth of three here and a depth of two here. Therefore, we get another blue chaotic slash. Then what happened after that? We have a blue, I, I'm sorry, a red banker win here. So because it's not at the top, we go three columns to the left one, two, three, and compare this to this. They're both circles. Therefore, we get a red predictable slash here. And I'm not gonna keep going, but I welcome you to pause the video and just study it yourself. Make sure you understand how this is matching up to that. And that is all I have to say about the cockroach pig and about the whole scoreboard in general except we also have some nice simple statistics up here. These are pretty self-explanatory. And on my demo game here, we also have some more statistics here that might be helpful if you're counting cards, which for the most part in Baccarat is a waste of time. And this shows the house edge of all three major bets at any given time. And you can see that it fluctuates according to the 
composition of the shoe, but this is getting outside the point of this video, so I will not go in further depth on that, but don't expect to see this stuff at the casino. This stuff you're only gonna see at my demo game at the Wizard of Odds because we like card counters at the Wizard of Odds. So, all right, I probably lost your attention 10 minutes ago. So for those of you still with me, thank you for being patient with me. I hope you learned something from this video and it wasn't too boring. And I hope to see you in another one of my videos soon. Thanks, YouTube. Bye.